Even I'll admit that this is extra, but honestly, none of us can judge DreamWorks for this new logo. Marvel does it, DC does it, why shouldn't everyone know what movies you've created? So it's not technically Puss in Boots style opening credits since he isn't in there, but I still like it. It's nice to be reminded that it's just a fairy tale right as the wishing star scorches the planet. Puss, don't walk into the light! Although, I guess he does come to terms with death in this one. Spoilers! Papa! He stepped on my face! And we will never wash it again. Hygiene lessons and fanaticism lessons. Why is the governor holding a skull in his portrait? Kind of makes me think about death. Ah! Yarn beach balls. This whole thing has a rock concert vibe, so that tracks. Who's ever been touched by a blade? Getting touched by a blade shadowing. Bring me the head of Booth and Booth! And he's still got that Star Lord thing going for him. So you've probably already noticed that this one feels a little different from the first one. Stylistic sparks and swipes from the swords clashing, little sound animations from the boots stomping, even the fire looks hand painted. I worry we might be taking the wrong lessons from Mitchells vs. the Machines in Spider-Verse, but I'm down, it's beautiful. And hey, he's keeping his sword parries in time with the music, so that's taking the right lessons from Edgar Wright. And my personal favorite new touch, the absolutely insane vibrance and oversaturation of the colors. Optimism, or just a stupid kid. Huh, what does that say about me? The interesting thing about the animation is that some of it's on twos, like the giant, but then other times we get movement on every one of the 24 frames. But skipping frames giving a similar effect. Watch the milk. <laughs> and this guy shaking his hand. I actually did that in real life, which is why I noticed. Jack Horner's pies, what a crazy Easter egg. Oh my gosh, it's death in the crowd. The anime vibes are off the chain. Look, I don't only watch Attack on Titan, but it's a giant and there's a bell. Come on. <laughs> Everything about this opening battle is such a great setup for the rest of the movie. It perfectly illustrates how little Puss thinks about death. He's more concerned with the music and keeping in time with the beat. The legend will never die! <laughs> I mean, technically he didn't say he wouldn't die, just the legend. So it's still an accurate song. Also, that's the eighth bell toll in this scene, signifying his eighth life ending. <laughs> I'll never not love Puss's full-on cat moments. Like. Also, for those of you who were surprised by the reveal that the wolf wasn't just a bounty hunter later on, look at the corners of these death cards. It's even got his sickles. Plus, I think you set the oven too high! <laughs> Gingy got leg transplant surgery with frosting stitches. Make it your heaviest. Oh, I keep the heavy stuff in the back. <laughs> Makes you think about what other type of clientele a bar would have to be prepared for with special libations in Fantasyland. A little single origin hay smoothie for Donkey? Okay, they are very hard to hear, but there are eight clock chimes, and on the eighth, the candle goes out and then death appears. Oh, I keep the heavy stuff in the back. That reflection doesn't make any sense, unless you're deaf, and figuratively have push trapped. My compliments to your cobbler. I mean, I imagine he's a cord wainer, but tomato, tomato. Compliments. And Puss is drinking his ninth shot there. Eight are already empty. Eh, get it, get it. <laughs> The tonal shift, the red that fills the screen when Puss is first touched by a blade. Puss does the same cartwheel he did against the giant and death catches him mid-air. He also cuts his catchphrase off. Fear me if you dare me. Excellent storytelling to help us understand the stakes this bounty hunter is bringing. Pick it up. Pick it up. And you thought Escobar was the scariest that Wagner would ever get. Corre, corre, gatito. That was Run Run Kitten. Definitely more terrifying in Espanol. And Andy Dufresne would be proud of this exit. Look at him inside the boots, a real puss in... B boots. Stabby Tabby! Tabbies are the best cats, and if you can get one that stabs your enemies, who could complain? <laughs> I knew his dark and mysterious eyes were enhanced. No judgment, though. We can't all be Nestor Carbonell. Eyeliner is such a beautiful thing. <laughs> right back to cleaning. No? <laughs> yes, he's back! <laughs> Stupid mittens. Charlie Kelly would like a word. Me but I think there's a reason that Puss or Pickles is the only ginger tabby in there, and it's because no one would ever give up their orange cat. There's the obvious change of his beard, but the more subtle shifts, like Puss going from walking on two feet to all fours, even his ears are down more often now. Puss in Boots has always used the wanted posters as a way to introduce characters, but we're really up in our game now. The scars on Perito's belly make me even sadder because he must have had a family at some point. Or maybe it's just the nice vet taking pity on him. Puss is so traumatized at this point, he sees the silhouette of death, even though it's actually Papa Bear. Excuse me, my darling. We're looking for the legendary Puss in Boots. I love that we had an entire scene with the three bears where they didn't talk, making Ray Winstone's Cockney London accent that much more endearing. Ha, <laughs> hat on a hat. Just noticing that Puss still has the scar from where death touched him with a blade. You ain't well fixed for brains. What a nice way of saying such a mean thing. You got this. Encouragement. Nope, hate this. 
<laughs> Jack is so big his wanted poster doesn't fit in frame. Puss in Bastet, the Egyptian goddess? Is that the Beauty and the Beast floating flower? Baby unicorn horns, half as heavy. Look, maybe he's not totally evil. They could be Cabin in the Woods unicorns. Geppetto counting his money and bopping along. Emperor Geppetto is pure evil. Finally be the master of all magic. Simple premise, Jack doesn't have any magic, so he steals it all now. You can just barely see Kitty before she opens her eyes. <laughs> Oh no, I misjudged the situation! Astute observations. Also, can't believe Jack did sisters with matching face snake tattoos so dirty. Put some crawl on your face and die. Shh. Of shame. Please, mock me quietly. Banter is still top notch. Also, how dare she? That's a beautiful beard. And you're supposed to be dead. I got better? As easy as turning back from a newt. I hate talking fairy tales. No clue why Jafar is on there, but this might be the most brutal thing I've ever seen in a kid's movie. Carpet is the most innocent Disney character. And I stand by it, but a mustacheectomy is also brutal. And I've only had this happen with the zipper of my jacket, but oof, also brutal. Puss still giving back to the people. Puss in birth! No one says their own name like Puss. I'm not sure there's any name Antonio couldn't make sound badass. Also, watch Kitty's eye roll. Dang, his upper eyelid covers his pupils at first, and since the whites of his eyes are red, he looks like the devil. And I mean, Sharon's coins? I know it's a fairy tale, so the rules are loosey-goosey, but I feel like Puss should have figured out that he's not just a bounty hunter. <laughs> That's a good way to end up melancholy. Or, you know, have a Siamese dream. Aw, those aren't horses. Now we know where Jack got his display horns. I don't believe you. That's okay. As long as you believe in yourself. What? Is he deranged? Yep. Self-confidence can come off like that sometimes. Bad dog, stupid dog. Hey, you! You there! Get out! Leave it! Drop it! Big rat, small pig. As many names as Puss, they do have a lot in common. He cannot be trusted. <laughs> the slow pull. Eh, yeah, dog knows what's important in these transitions. He is not wrong. Poor little guy got caught in the cuteness crossfire. And even though it might seem like random bad words smashed together, the map really reflects what each of them fears. For Kitty, it's being alone because she can't ever trust anyone, and for Puss, it's death. Will it make us rich? Rich enough to hibernate all the year round? Somehow having the bears from East London makes them more adorable? Just at a pub in Stratford being bears. All I smell is bullshit. Shush censoring. <laughs> With the rock in it. <laughs> and then throw me in a river. <laughs> Perito's story makes Disney tragedy seem like a walk in the park, and he literally can't be kept down. Yeah, that tracks. Took the stone right with the sword in it. Aw, Mama Bear goes right for Goldie to cushion her fall. His axe was a cheese grater, and now he's bones. Quality of your character. I'm your conscience. Jiminy Stewart Cricket. It's like all the old good time movie moments rolled into one. Pretty boss flamethrower, right? Never would have clocked John Mulaney as being able to play pure evil, but he's killing it, and killing this poor baker. <laughs> Dark. Never trust anyone. <laughs> it's a don't trust anyone lesson, and Perito just can't help but be in awe of how awesome the swipe was. That's amazing! My beautiful beard. It is. No. No, it plays. You're, you're, you're not gonna shoot a puppy, are you, Jack? Yeah, in the face. Why? A-plus delivery for just the most despicable line. Kind of have to admire a completely irredeemable baddie who just has no idea why bad things might be bad. Dude is standing in a skull. Love the confetti surrounding Puss's head, only to turn around and see death. So many animated movies don't have any villains these days. Like, who's the bad guy in Encanto? Exactly. And then this movie has two groups of baddies and then the literal incarnation of death. Nice change of pace. And another hint if you're unsure who the wolf is, he's not present on the map. Also, Nostalgic Pines gives us a hint at what Goldilocks really wants. Voy a hacer a todos alfombras de baño. I think that was I will make everyone bath mats and I truly hope I'm correct. Also, for a kid's movie, they really nail what a panic attack can feel like. Your heart being all you can hear, the muffled sounds. If you've had one, you can imagine the tightness in your chest and that weird feeling like your skull might explode out through your ears. Just me. Aww. Rebecca Welton would still be my choice when I get a panic attack, but Pedito gets to fulfill his dream of being a therapy dog. I I'm supposed to be a fearless hero. Really Roy Kenting his feelings. Ted Lasso, you've seen it? Watch it. We've been in worse pickles. But who told you that name? Ha! Commas, they matter. I guess, not in spoken words, but still, Vampire Weekend made some points. Adjust your view. What you seek may be right in front of you. Yeah, it's the house, but actually it's her family she already has. And the Nostalgic Pines can be a little Garden of the Lotus Eaters, but I see it less as a challenge and more of a reminder. Goodness, that split screen is gorgeous. Hansel and Gretel, yes, but also of course Humpty would have checked out the fairy tale book. It was the required reading for the Golden Goose heist.
And would you look at that? The first letter has a message. I didn't show up either. Holding a grudge against someone for doing something you also did must be love. With your one true love. Who? Yourself. I mean, she really knows him. Heart-shaped lens flare? I guess these two are feeling it. You know, I never had much as a kid. Just loving parents, stability in a mansion, and a thriving baked goods enterprise for me to inherit. Useless crap like that. Man, Jack is really the perfect encapsulation of that word. I, I won't say that rhymes with schmishmilich, where he's never really known much hardship and takes everything he has for granted, but still needs more and thinks his life is unfair. Really, the win is for ethical bug shaking his head in disbelief. I've been waiting for a shot with all the bakers to see if they really did a baker's dozen of bakers, and I think I've cracked it. There are eight in the bridge, one driving the carriage. Three get exploded by unicorn horns, and one is skeletonized. That's 13, a baker's dozen. You're horrible. Perfection. God, Team Friendship. I, I can't really think of a better name than that, honestly. Oi, you criming us when we just crimed you? No, no crime back. Well, that is the rule of the streets. Also, no murdering inside whatever you designate base. Oh, that is just right. Such a fun nod to the original fairy tale. Hey, the thing they did in the first movie. Teen friendship. Ooh. No, that is a crap name. Hard disagree, yet somehow Olivia Coleman still gets the win. You're nothing but a low rent Cinderella. Low rent always seems like the worst insult, and I don't think I even really get it. I haven't got dingleberries. No, you do. You do have them. Unless you're the Charmin bear, you, you all do. With such perfect delivery. <laughs> he just wants friends to riff with. Oh, I wish I had a family like this. I realize it's like the message, but it really is bonkers how often it takes an outsider to help us humans see how dope our situations are. Ooh, using their own speech patterns against them. Low blow, soft boss. No! Not a beast! It could always be worse. Be thankful there isn't a giant statue made of, I don't know, like a collection of highly flammable and pliable willow branches. Something like that. Would you call him Wussy Moon? I refuse to support them as they are pushing an ideal of machismo on him that is both unhealthy and unsustainable. But <laughs> Wuss in Boots is an absolute scorcher of a burn. Death. Even if you knew that's a killer reveal. I'm death. Straight up. Scariest cartoon villain of all time? Yes, I'm counting the secret of Nim. A star transition down to a house rock formation. Getting a family! That's what? A proper family! Also, her storybook called her human family a proper family. We'll get you that wish. Now that's true love. The good, the bad, and the goldie. Thought I was being all clever, but it's literally the title track to the score here. Also, really love the snorri cam on the map. You're the smash, I'm the crab. Saving the smash. Maybe one life is enough? What a nerd. <laughs> What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? No, just one. Love that reveal of Kitty and Perito when he raises his head. It's also the second time it happened. Oh, he's gone mall. He's gone full death mall. Say hello to my Gadito Blade. <laughs> the inflection on Gadito Blade. And you gotta love that Kitty's gift saves him. Ooh, Death's red eyes reflected, just like it was Puss's green eyes in the first fight. Hey, and his cartwheel worked this time because he uses his foot instead of his blade. I know I can never defeat you, Lobo. There's something very self-confident about calling Death Wolf in the sentence where he admits he knows Death will ultimately win. You're ruining this for me. <laughs> death fails because it's not fun. Death is that friend that wants to start a band but never wants to help load the equipment. I haven't talked about Death's whistle at all, which really ties a bow on his whole vibe. It's that spaghetti western tone that also paints him as indifferent to your suffering and severely frightening at the same time, even as he's walking away. Holy holy. Some Alice in Wonderland snacks to make him the true Big Jack Corner. Ah! Teamwork. And hey, it's the worst callback ever. Oh, what did I do to deserve this? I mean, what specifically? <laughs> Thumbs down, the opposite of T2. Or wait, actually, is he, is he putting his thumb in a pie? Oh, it's good, it's good. Everything is just right. Didn't think it would be the secondary antagonist to bring tears to my eyes. How about Jeff? Very sweet that they stick with Perito, but I'd fully back them going with Jeff. Kinda like it, since that's what my friends call me. Whoops, spoke too soon on who's bringing tears to my eyes. And to see some old friends. Wait, what? Like Shrek? Are they doing a crossover movie finally? Get it, get it, because I haven't done the Shrek movies. It's good, it's a good joke. Oh, you're still here? <laughs> cold, puss, cold. For you, that's how you died last time. The Last Wish. Hey, a good sequel. 
Who would have thought? JK, there's actually a pretty solid history of sequels surpassing their OGs. Empire, Wrath of Khan, Paddington 2, Aliens, Ragnarok. I'm actually more impressed that this movie completely reinvented itself while not ignoring the 2011 movie. Puss's opening number pretty much sums up what he's about, but you could absolutely watch this without the original and also without the Shrek movies. And that's really saying something, because without mincing words, this is a sequel to a spin-off of a sequel. And yet everything works. The story is good, the writing and dialogue are fantastic, the animation is fun and interesting, the character design is through the roof perfect. Seriously, think about Big Jack Horner. I hate that guy. I hate his design. How is he somehow the most ridiculous looking character and the most terrifying? He's so creepy and like sticky or distended like he's three little jack corners in a trench coat with two of those arms from the mad max episode of rick and morty <laughs> he's such a gross bad guy and death i mean that fluffy boy is nightmare material for me i asked jude who he thought the scariest cartoon villain was and obviously he said i'm not scared of any of them so yeah. But everything else falls into place when you have a cast like this. Mulaney and Mora competing for more thrilling bad guy when Mulaney somehow out-evils the actual embodiment of death. It's something else. Obviously it comes down to characterization more than voice because Wagner Mora could make Sam Elliott wince. Everyone is great though. Antonio has created a character and push that truly stands alone at this point. Again, in a sequel to a spin-off of a sequel that was mostly a one-off joke about Cat Zorro. And then we get this story and message, ironically similar to Wrath of Khan, about growing older. About our fear of death and not just death of our bodies, but of our legend, death of self. And I deeply appreciate that even though it's mostly wrapped up neatly, Puss doesn't beat death, he can't. And part of not losing to death is knowing that he can't beat death. It's an interesting take on a common theme, accepting his one life in lieu of getting nine more. And I'm here for more of it, because I don't think it's too much for kids. They're gonna engage with it at the level they can. He can be the big bad wolf from the Three Little Pigs, or he can be more. But hey, that's just a theory. Uh, wait, no, wrong channel. But if you want more musings on life and death, check out Nebula. And currently there are two videos about death on Nebula early for Cocaine Bear and Blade 2. Lots of death in both. You can watch both right now ad-free uncensored by signing up. Both of them are privately age-gated and demonetized, and one has a copyright claim on YouTube. Yay! So I don't even know when they'll be on here. But you'll always be able to count on Nebula since there are no advertisers to appease, no ads, so I don't have to censor like I do on YouTube. And Nebula is the place to find all of my exclusive content and early release content we call Nebula First. But that's not all. There's also original high production pieces from some of your favorite creators that you'll only ever find on Nebula. And if you sign up for an annual plan with my link, you'll get 40 percent off. And if you act super fast, like lightning fast, today is the last day you can get a lifetime membership and never pay again. While you're there, check out classes where Tom from Like Stories of Old will teach you how to analyze stories and enrich your own. Or watch Maggie Mae Fish's Unrated. It already has six episodes and it is stellar. And you'll always be able to find all my videos on Nebula early, ad-free, sponsor-free, uncensored. Also, if you like the censored versions of videos, there's always a link to that version as well, even if it's not live on YouTube. It's a win-win! Win! Thanks for your support, and I'll see you over on Nebula. Who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? We did, we did, we did, we did, we did.